Okay, here we're going to be looking at futures contracts. Now, a futures contract is where we buy or sell a specified amount of an asset at a specified price with a delivery at a specified future date. Now, these future contracts, they're traded on an exchange with an established market. And their fair value is based on the new futures prices that are established each day. And these new future prices are used to compute any gain or loss on the contract over time. Okay, the example that we're going to go through here for our futures contract. We're going to buy a futures contract in a Chicago Board of Trade to receive an August delivery of a commodity, and it could be like a commodity of steel or copper. And we're going to buy 100,000 pounds at a future price here of 65 cents per pound. So looking at our contract here, we have an established future date here of an August delivery, and then we have a specified price here of 65 cents per pound. And we also have the specific amount of the asset here, 100,000 pounds. Now, to fulfill this contract, we either do it through delivering proof that the product is at the warehouse or by paying a cash difference, difference or by providing another contract at the market price. The actual product is not exchanged. Okay, to calculate our gains and losses on this futures contract. Now these gains and losses are based on the fair value of the contract since this future rate or price that we're going to be using for our comparison here is established by a market exchange rate. So looking at our first date here of June 1st, we compare the June 1st future rate here or future price with the May 1st uh, uh, future rate here and this May 1st uh, date here represents the contract inception or the start date of the contract. So looking at our uh, future rate here on June 1st, it, it was 0.665. It actually was an increase over the uh, start date here of the contract of 0.650. So we'd be recognizing a gain between the difference between the two here. And we'd be taking the difference between the 0.665 minus the 0.650 uh, future rate here and take that times the quantity under contract. And in this case, we'd have a gain here of $1,500. Now looking at our next period here of July 1st, we'd be comparing the future rate on July 1st with the future rate here of the previous period of June 1st. So in this case we had a reduction here in the future rate. So we'd be receiving less money uh, than less money. So we would take the difference between the um, 0.630 here for the July date and the 0.665 here and the June date times our quantity here and we had a loss here a reduction of $3,500. Now looking at our last period here August 15th we'd again be comparing our fu future rate here on August 15th with the previous uh, period here of July 1st of uh, uh, future rate here and we again we had a reduction here in this future rate so we'd be re receiving less money for this futures contract so we'd be recognizing a loss and that would be the difference between the futures rate here of July 1st of 0 0.620 minus the uh, 0.630 or excuse me for the July 1st minus the uh, or the difference here between the 0 0.620 of the August 15th date and the difference here times that quantity would be a loss or a reduction here of $1,000 on this futures contract. Okay, to record this uh, futures contract on our balance sheet and our on an income statement, we have to set up two accounts here, a brokerage payable account here and a brokerage margin account. Uh, first looking at our brokerage payable account here. This is where we recognize any gains and losses on this futures contract. So in the case here of a gain we would be debiting our brokerage payable account here and in the case of a loss we'd be crediting our brokerage payable account here because uh, we would be in the case here of crediting it we'd have to be paying more money on that contract because of a loss and then for the gain here we'd be debiting it because we'd be actually receiving more money here in that contract than what we'd be paying. And then we would also be recognizing any gain or loss on this futures contract here as part of our net income on our income statement. And then at the uh, uh, payment date or when we close out this contract we'd be netting any gains and losses here in our brokerage account and then we would be uh, either debiting or crediting our cash account for that gain or loss net amount here. And in this case, it was a net loss amount here of $2,000. So we would be crediting or reducing our cash account here for $2,000. 
Now this brokerage margin account, this is what we had to pay down uh, to uh, the broker here before we entered into this futures contract. So in this case, we had to pay $30,000 here as a payment to the broker before entering that contract. And then after the contract was closed out, we would be getting the brokerage amount here back. So we'd credit it for $30,000 and then we'd be debiting our cash account here for $30,000. So when we originally uh, purchased this contract, uh, we would debit our $30,000 here in our or increase our brokerage margin account for that amount and then of course we'd be reducing our cash amount for that $30,000. Okay in summary futures contracts they're traded on an exchange with an established market and their fair value is based on these new future prices that are established each day or these future rates here and to determine any gain or loss on the contract you would be comparing the future rates between periods starting with the contract start date or the inception of the contract and then you would compare that with the first period here that we're looking at and any uh, gain or loss here you'd have to uh, determine based on whether you're buying the contract or selling the contract and then those gains or losses here would be uh, really the fair value or the fair value of the gain or loss for the uh, period.